So, we got ourselves a sketchy, brand new iPhone 12 rumor. But like, how sketchy is it? Want tech news in a way that doesn't suck? Subscribe and turn on notifications for, cause I said so. Well, hello then, greetings, and welcome back to Fapata Front Page Tech. Of course, the show that gives you all it is tech news from one geek that is me to another that is you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the only tech news show on the internet that if you subscribe right now, you can get tomorrow's news today. Don't believe me? Let me show you. All right, so we've got a few things to talk about today, per usual. But first up, story numero uno, uh, another Apple story, not an iPhone story. Well, iPhones are in it, like it's a place, and you can put, iPhones are in the place, but, okay, anyway. On March 13th, I let you know that according to a source within Apple, uh, they were getting ready to close the stores, at least US stores. And then like 12 hours later, it was a thing. It happened, except, it was more than U.S. store closures, it was just ever, all of them. They just closed them all. Now, of course, why they actually closed the stores, I feel like that's pretty obvious. Because they closed all the schools and instead of staying home, the kids went and hung out at Apple stores. Just standing around each other and coughing on iPhones and shit. Just... <coughs> Yeah, you know, sorry everybody else. Sorry that everybody else has Rona now. Little Tommy just had to stand here and play with this iPhone that he couldn't afford even if he saved up three years of his lunch money. So obviously they closed him for good reason, but like when are they gonna open back up? Well, according to a brand new report coming out from Bloomberg via Mark Gurman, a very reputable Apple source here, Apple's retail chief apparently told staff that she expects the company to reopen many more, quote, many more of its retail stores in May. Hey, there you go, that's awesome. So we can expect to see more and more Apple stores open up throughout May, that's really cool. Uh, I could have sworn though, and I'm not an expert or anything, but I could have sworn we heard that before. Wait a minute, what do we have here? What is this? Is this a tweet from John Posner from last month giving an update on Apple Store closures? Saying that they were gonna open on a case-by-case -case basis, saying the earliest being the first half of April? Well, let's see, did that happen? Oh, yep, there there you go, it did, that, that did happen. And then following that with, they want all the stores open by the end of May? Well, sh you know what that means, right? I have attended! I'm no longer here to tell you about the things of today, but instead the news of tomorrow. I only did that to piss Brian off. He hates, hates editing that, so sorry, Burn but not sorry. Okay, next story. All right, so next up, obviously things aren't like great right now. There's sort of kind of a pandemic like outside your front door. And because the bat bap is out there, you can't go outside, you gotta stay inside. And there's really only one good thing that has come during this whole time. It's internet service providers not being slimy, sneaky fucks. <laughs> Excuse me for that little outburst. We got some good news, ladies and gents. Vaginis and Peenies, Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, and Cox are going to extend their policies and waive late fees. I'm pretty sure last time we talked about them extending their policies to waive late fees and like overages and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure last time we mentioned that on the show, we said that it was probably gonna, you know, be extended even further, and here we are, it happened. At first it was like towards the end of March, then towards the end of April, then May, and now they've extended all the way to June 30th. Now this doesn't mean you can just like say screw it all and just stop paying your bill, even though I know a lot of you are right now, even if you got the money, you're just like, fuck it, why not? I don't care. You still gotta pay it, and they will still likely at some point shut you off. The thing that you can do, though, is just call them. Just pick up the phone like a human, like a functioning adult. Call them and be like, listen, I'm having a hard time right now, so I can't pay. And they'll be like, okay, you can't pay, okay, it's fine. But also, you know, like, if you don't pay your bill and they shut you off, then you can't watch this show, and that would be sad. Because there's really only a couple things that the internet is good for. Uh, porn and front page tech. You're welcome. Okay, all right, so, what's this? What am I doing? What, what's this maneuver? Okay, what do we got here? What's next? Uh, iPhone 12, sketchy iPhone 12 rumor, uh, but how sketchy is it? So first we're gonna talk about the rumor itself, and then we'll talk about how sketchy it is. What? 
What's the problem? Okay, so according to this iPhone 12 rumor, specifically a rumor regarding the iPhone 12 Pro Max. According to Economic Daily News, a site in China, they are saying that the Pro Max could feature Touch ID technology under the display itself. So Touch ID would be coming back, but like not how we have it in the SE, it would be embedded in the display underneath it. Now they also say that to make this happen and to get things moving, Apple is actually working with BOE and Qualcomm. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Apple and Qualcomm aren't exactly the best of buds. So, you know, that right there is the first red flag with this, but that's certainly not enough to dispel this rumor, I guess. And if true, that would mean that the top of the line model iPhone 12 Pro Max would have Face ID, would have the notch for Face ID, but it would also have Touch ID. So two different biometric security measures on this device. Now it is sketchy, but the reason I'm even talking about this on the show or giving it any weight at all is because of who's reporting it economic daily news they have been right before specifically in an area where when they first talked about it we didn't really believe them they were like the first ones to say that airpods pro were gonna come out at the end of october of whatever year that <laughs> was i don't remember what year was that i mean i even credited them for that last year in a tweet about airpods pro so they were right about that so there's that i guess but uh, also, I should tell you, at least according to information from my sources, like, I have heard zero about this being a possibility. Like, this has never even come up in a conversation about iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max, ever. And when I reached out to a few of my sources in supply chain stuff, they were like, yeah, no, we, we don't know anything about that. So, if, I guess if it's good news, I have convinced them to dig into this and look further into this and see if they can come up with any new information for us, but they got nothing so far. And keep in mind, like, prototyping for iPhone 12, the whole device lineup is, like, just now getting finalized. So, I just find it hard to believe that this is a thing. If I had to guess, if I had to put a percentage on it, I'd say like 20%, maybe. And like, I don't, I don't care either way. Like this could, it could come with face ID and touch ID, or it could just come with face ID and it won't change how I feel about the device. I'm curious what you guys think. Would this make a difference for you? Are you interested in an iPhone 12 Pro Max that has two biometric uh, security measures on it that you could either use your face or your finger, like, do you care? I mean, we can all pretty much say with some pretty good confidence here that yes, Apple is working on technology that would allow you to have an under display fingerprint reader. This, they're not, they're definitely not the first company to do this, obviously, but it's just like, is it even worth it for Apple currently and the trajectory that they're on? I just don't see them going backwards and adding Touch ID into the phone. At least on any phone that has Face ID in it already. When they went on stage and they talked about Face ID, that was the future. They believed in it so much that the phone didn't even come with Touch ID. And so that's, you know, I guess that's what I'm gonna go based off of right now. I just don't see Apple going backwards. I can't see them going on stage and saying, yeah, Face ID is great. But also, remember Touch ID? That was cool. We finally found a way to put it into the display because then that would sort of be them admitting that when they first put out the iPhone 10 with the notch and Face ID, that they weren't entirely confident on it. They would have had Touch ID under the display if they could, but they just couldn't at the time because they didn't figure it out. And Phil Schiller's usually the guy to go on stage and announce iPhone stuff. Do you, look at this man. Do you see him going on stage and be like, yeah, the Touch ID's back, woo. I don't think so. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. And that's it. That's the show. Hopefully you liked it. You learned something. If you did, hit the like button. If you hate my stupid face, that's cool. Dislike button works too. If you're new here, subscribe. Uh, stay clean. Wash your hands. Wipe your butt. Uh, stay safe. We'll see you guys tomorrow.